Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Jennifer J with Moving Forward. I'm really glad you're here. Hey, we do have some new subscribers again, so hello to all the newbies. Glad you're here. Um, if you have not had a chance to go look at the first few videos, um, it's a continuing story, so you'll want to start out with number one. Uh, you can do that by going to your top toolbar and clicking on videos, and then it'll take you to all of them instead of just the last few. So if you want to do that before you watch this, that's cool. Um, but today we're going to be in Luke chapter 7, verses 36 through 39. So it says there, and I'm going to be reading this out of actually my Sunday school book, but you can look it up in your Bible too. Luke is in the Gospels. Um, and it says in verse 36, And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with ointment. Now when the Pharisees, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touches him, for she is a sinner. So there's a lot I want to unpack here today, you guys, because it was so good. So the first thing that stood out to me when I read that was the word behind. She was behind him and she washed his feet. And I was thinking, how could she be behind him, but be washing his feet? Because it would seem like, you know, as we're sitting, our feet are in front of us. Um, so he had to be sitting in a way that they're, they're at a meal, right? but he had to be sitting in a way that his feet were behind him. So I did a little research on that. And um, back in biblical times, the tables were very low. They didn't have chairs to sit at the table. The tables were very low and they sat on the ground or on pillows or whatever. Um, and they would lean oftentimes to their left. And so their feet, you know, would be tucked, tucked behind them. <laughs> um, so, that made sense that she could be behind him and washing his feet. Um, so that was interesting to me, first of all. But also then, uh, I thought about that he said that she's a sinner. And so the Pharisee knew that she was a sinner. And the most likely conclusion is that she was a prostitute. And the reason is because everyone in the village would know who the prostitute was, right? So... Um, obviously we're all sinners. Um, hers was very um, publicly known. And so people know who that is. And so that's why he could say she's a sinner because he knew who she was. Um, and then also some people identify her as Mary Magdalene. I think even if you watch um, the television series or movie series, I'm not sure what it is, um, The Chosen, they identify her as Mary Magdalene, but I disagree. And it doesn't say, it doesn't tell us. So there's no right or wrong. We don't know. My own personal opinion is that in Luke chapter eight, so we had just read out of Luke chapter seven and he didn't tell us her name or anything about her. But in Luke chapter eight, then Luke identifies Mary Magdalene for the first time, it would seem. And he's, he's, talking about her having had seven demons. He doesn't say anything about her having been a prostitute. Um, and it seems as though he is just introducing her to his readers. So I don't think it's the same. A lot of theologians don't think it's the same woman, um, but some people do. So form your own opinion. Um, but the Pharisee's house, the reason she could go, so one of the things I've always wondered Again, I did a little research. One of the things I've always wondered is, how did she get in the house? Like, if we're having a dinner party, people aren't just randomly coming in, right? Um, but she heard that Jesus was there and she went. So what I found out is that back in biblical times, if there were dignitaries at your house for dinner, it would often be open um, for spectators. So they wouldn't sit at the table with the meal, right? But they could be there, which seems weird to me, <laughs> but, but they could be there and observe and listen to the conversation. And 
no one would have expected a prostitute to show up or someone whose sin was well known. Might not have been a prostitute, might have been something else, but whatever it was, she was known as a sinner. And so no one would have anticipated she would show up, but she did, which was really brave because anything could have happened, right? And she was really brave to, to do that because she was determined. She, she wanted to honor Jesus and she took her alabaster box. Now, an alabaster box is made of a substance like um, smooth white stone, um, like marble, it could be like marble. Um, it was expensive and she kept her anointing oil or her ointment oil in that box. And so she stood behind him and she cried and as her tears fell on his feet, she used her hair to wipe them up and then she anointed him with the oil. So um, Jesus had said, um, because it was customary to take off your sandals when you went into somebody's house, because right there, they didn't have shoes like we do, right? Um, so their feet were dirty. They didn't have streets like we do. Um, and so dusty, dirty, and they would take off their shoes. And so the Pharisee, well, let's read the rest of it. Luke 7, 44 through 50, he says, and he turned to the woman and said to Simon, seest thou this woman? I entered into your house and you gave me no water for my feet. So it was customary back then that the host would wash your feet or at least, at the very least, provide water and a towel so that you could wash your feet. That was just customary because it was a nice thing to do and it feels good to have your feet clean. Um, but he says, but, but she has washed my feet with tears and wiped, wiped them with the hairs of her head. You gave me no kiss. And it was also customary then to greet with a kiss. So not, you know, on the mouth or whatever, but you know, you see people hug and do this. That's probably more what he was talking about. Kiss on the cheek, but you gave me no kiss. Um, but from the time I came in, this woman hasn't ceased to kiss my feet. Um, my head with oil, you did not anoint. And that was another custom that that showed honor to your guest to anoint their head with oil. But this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. So the point he was making is that the Pharisee didn't do those things, which are just common courtesy, common courtesy to provide water to wash his feet. So it was almost like he was, he was letting him in his house but he was doing it with an attitude. He didn't really believe he was a prophet. He didn't believe he was anybody that needed to be treated special. And in fact, he treated him rudely. Um, but in verse 47, Jesus says, wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they sat at meat with him, they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, who is this that forgives sins also? And he said to the woman, thy faith has saved thee, go in peace. So definitely an awkward situation because Jesus turned to the woman to talk, but he was definitely speaking to the Pharisee. He's looking at the woman, but he's making sure he hears him, right? He needs to pay attention. And so the Pharisee's name was Simon. We learn about that in another chapter, but it's not Simon... Um, Simon was a, a common name, a common Jewish name. So um, this Pharisee wasn't any of the other Simons that we've read about. He wasn't one of the apostles. He wasn't Simon the leper. Um, he wasn't the second born son of Jacob. He's a different Simon. So we, we do learn that in that as well. But that foot washing was a centuries old custom. And the fact that he didn't um, provide that for Jesus um, when his feet would have been filthy and um, it's just common courtesy to do that. Um, it just shows that he would, Simon the Pharisee was just pretty cold, pretty calculated. He knew what he was doing and, and that's what he did. So um, it makes me uh, ask the question to you then though, how are you like a Pharisee? Like in what situation, this was one of the questions from our Sunday school lesson, it really made me think about it and I wanted to ask you guys because there are times we, we say, 
we love others, but we judge others. We judge people by how they look. We judge people, we, we might say we don't, but we do. There are stereotypical looks that we automatically jump to a conclusion about a person when we see a particular look. And I believe we all do it. We might not choose to do it and we might have that knee jerk reaction and then decide we're gonna be kinder and gentler. But think about it the next time that you recognize that you're having that knee jerk reaction of oof, when you see somebody. Um, think about it and think about how should you really act. Maybe, maybe God is prompting you to go over and speak to that person. When, if he's reminding you of this conversation, a very one-sided conversation, <laughs> but if he's reminding you of this, it's because he's speaking to you and you need to listen and go, go speak to that person. Say hello. You might be the only person that they talk to that day that is kind to them. You might be the only smile they see. Um, you don't know what's going on in their mind. You don't know um, what they've been through that day or what they might begin to go through um, later that day that they will need to reflect on that kindness. Um, but something's gonna happen and you're gonna remember this conversation. And, and I just would challenge you to go over when you have that memory of this to go over and speak to that person. Just say hello. Say, how are you? I mean, if you're brave, say Jesus loves you. If you're not brave, <laughs> at least just speak and say hello and how are you and, and really smile and care about that person because they matter. And, you know, I had an interaction once and this was a friend of mine. I mean, we weren't close friends, but we were friendly um, didn't know each other real well, but we had kids in the same class at school and um, she worked at a, a local establishment. I won't say where, because some people will know who I'm talking about. Um, and I went in and I was purchasing something at that establishment and asking her a question because she was involved in something at the school that I was surprised that she volunteered for. Um, I was surprised for a couple of reasons. One, it wasn't something I would ever be interested in doing. So it surprised me that anybody would be interested in doing it. Um, and two, because um, she didn't have kids that were involved in this activity. And so I was, why, why would you volunteer for that? Like your kids aren't even involved in that. Um, and I wasn't real nice. I didn't mean to be rude. I was just like, wow, why would you do that kind of attitude? because I didn't understand it. And I was kind of joking, but I was also kind of high and mighty when I look back on it. I didn't think so at the time, but when I look back on it, I realize that really wasn't very nice. Um, I found out later, later that week, she killed herself. And I have reflected on that conversation ever since because I thought, you know, I could have been kind. I could have been encouraging. I could have said, that's awesome and that's so cool that you put yourself out there like that. I could have said something instead of just being so quick to dismiss her or judge her or make her feel, possibly feel, I don't know how she felt, but possibly feel judged or inferior because of her choices. And I didn't know she dealt with depression. No, I had no idea. Um, I found that out later that she had dealt with severe depression for a long time. Um, Stuff like that will make you think, you know? So be kind to people and don't be so quick to judge those sinners. We are all sinners saved by grace. And so this week, that's my challenge to you. Just go out there, think about who you're, who you're looking at and talking to and be kind and smile and say something nice. And let me know how it goes. I'd love to hear your comments. And that is it until next time. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.